Shalom, everybody. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Zach Wild. This is your brother, Kasafo. Uh, we have a great lesson for everybody today, Mystery, Babylon the Great. Uh, this, we, we definitely revamped this. If anyone's seen our old lesson that we did on it, we're probably taking it down. Um, if, you have, if you did see it prior, um, this is a revamp of that lesson. We know the audio was pretty terrible on that video, and it was one of our older videos. So <laughs> we're definitely uh, coming back so that you can get the, the new information and the, the correct precepts and scriptures concerning mystery, mystery Babylon the Great. Um, Brother Kasafo, you got anything? <laughs> Praise I have for opportunity to get it right, man. Sorry for <laughs> how bad that lesson came out. You know, and, w and, w and w even with that being said, how bad the audio was and how the bad the lesson was, you guys still supported us and gave us a lot of views on that on that particular video. So we thank you for that. <laughs> so pray to you for that. <laughs> yeah, praise you. I'd say y'all bearing with us, man. You suffered the affliction. Yeah, you suffered the affliction. So. <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the information. So I keep you. Yes, amen. All right, so this lesson is to identify who the mystery woman is, known as Babylon the Great in Revelation, according to Scripture. Can we start at Revelation 17 and 5, please? Sure. And upon her forehead with a name written, Mystery, Babylon mystery. the Great. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Right off, we know this woman is a mystery. That alone lets us know it's not ancient Babylon. Because this one is a secret. It has to be revealed in its time. And here we are today. May Yacha be gracious to do so. Continue, please. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. This... As we're saying, this woman could not be ancient Babylon today because it would not have been a mystery if she was the same Babylon of old. Let's start with the former prophets who prophesied of her for edification to know who she is today. Can you read Ascension, I mean, Isaiah chapter 47, verse 1, please? Excuse me. And uh, just so everybody knows, uh, ancient Babylon was in Babel, Iraq today. So... Mm -hmm. And that was where they built Shinar. And uh, they they say the city of Babylon is over by the river Euphrates, but I'm not sure about all that. You know, scripturally, Shinar is where they built the Tower of Babel, but where, this, the, where they ended up having the city of Babylon. They say it's another place, but I'm not sure if they're telling the truth. So... Isaiah 47 and 1, when you're ready, please. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. She was a, this woman was a virgin daughter because she was untouched. And she is the daughter of Babylon and the Chaldeans walking in all their ways. But she's not ancient Babylon herself. The Babylonians and Chaldeans, were, they were known for their science and idolatry. And this daughter, this woman, is the same. Now, can we see who this woman is according to Scripture? Revelation 17 and 18, please. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. She is over the kings of the earth, and Isaiah prophesied that she will be taken down from her glory. Can you read Isaiah 47 and 5, please? Uh, Revelation 17 and 18 also shows that she has to be a physical place and not a spirit. Ah, thank you. It said that woman which thou sawest is that great city. Which reign up over the kings of the earth. So it can't be a, a right. Babylon spirit. It's actually mm. a place. It's actually a city. Actually a place that, that they're referring to. Thank you. That's important as well. That's important. 
and, and let's see that Isaiah show that this great city, who this woman is, will be taken down from her glory. Isaiah 47 and 5, please. Sit thou silent, and get, it, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. So that, that great city, though over all the earth, is going to come a time when she won't be the Lady of Kingdoms anymore. Continue in verse Isaiah 47 and 6, please. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thy hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient thou hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. So you see, this great city, who this woman is, though she's, she's over the kingdoms of the earth, and she's been given the highest people into her hand, and she's had no mercy upon them. So we have, wherever the Israelites were enslaved and were afflicted without compassion, I mean, without mercy, this is where that great city is. Now, interestingly, ancient Babylon showed mercy to the poor in the land of Israel and on the Israelites that were in the land of Babylon. So we can see, so we can know this isn't referring to ancient Babylon. You have in Second Kings chapter five, verse twenty-seven to thirty, the king of Judah was shown more favor than the kings of Babylon that were there with him. And then Jeremiah thirty-nine, verse nine and ten, you had the poor people that were left in the land of Judah, and they were given vineyards and fields where the Israelites had been afflicted and are being afflicted. The slaves were never given their own vineyards and fields. To support the poor. That, and then you have in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 4 to 10, the people that were literally living in Babylon during the Babylonian captivity in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, they had families and lived, and they also were set free to return back to Jerusalem. That lets us know that. This daughter of Babylon, where the Israelites, the Allahan's people were given into her hand and they were shown no mercy. This is not referring to ancient Babylon. The daughter of Babylon, on the other hand, showed, she showed no mercy and wasted us and will not let us go. Referring to the Israelites. Ahia was wroth with his people and gave his people into the hand of the daughter of Babylon. And she had no mercy upon them and very heavily laid the yoke. In the scriptures, we can see that this daughter of Babylon, she did these things not remembering what was going to come in the end. Can you read um, Isaiah chapter 47, verse 7, please? And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever. So that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. So she, this great city, was so willing to afflict the Israelites because she figured she's going to have her glory forever. She can't be brought down. But she didn't consider what's going to come upon her in the end. Isaiah saw the things that will come upon her. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 8, please. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. So you can see the pride of this great city, thinking nothing they will never see widowhood. They will never lose anyone or nor lose children. This is the mindset of that great city here in these times. This is the same woman that John was told of in Revelation, speaking ever so proudly. Can you read Revelations 18 and 7, please? How much she hath glorified herself and lived del deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit as a queen, and am no widow, and I shall see no sorrow. 
So that this great city is is very prideful, and this as much as she's been living delicately and deliciously, enjoying herself, she's gonna receive that much torment and sorrow because she thinks she's untouchable. She thinks she's a queen, no, never lost anything, and she's not gonna see any sorrow. This is how that that city views itself. Now, John was shown in the latter end that the Lord, what the Lord spake of that will come upon that great city. Can you read Re Revelation chapter four, verse one, please? After this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And so the things that John saw were, was going to be after his time. So that lets us know that that this great city that he saw was not one of the kingdoms, the old kingdoms of the world. It wasn't the Babylon, the Persians, the Greeks, or the old Roman Empire that John was actually in. And this was a kingdom that was going to come in these latter times, here after John's time. And that, that latter end of the woman that John saw, the angel showed it to him. Can we read Revelation 17 and 1, please? And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven veils, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. John was shown what shall be after his time. Hence this woman in Revelation is referred to as mystery, Babylon the Great, because she is not the city of ancient Babylon commonly known today in Iraq. She is that great city that was to come after John's time being carried by the Roman Empire. Can you read Revelation 17, verse 3 and to 5, please? Okay. Revelation 17, verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Continue, please. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. All right. Her appearance and being decked in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones have shown the glory of that great city. And the golden cup of abominations and the fornication showed the iniquity that the iniquity of her doctrine that she'll be pouring out on the world. This woman was known to Jeremiah as well as dwelling upon many waters. Hey, can you read Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 13, please? O thou, that, o thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The waters that this great city is dwelling upon and is actually people, nations, and multitudes, and tongues. Can you read Revelation 17 and 15, please? And he says unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. So that shows that great city has influence over the whole earth. All people are influenced by that great city by the wine of her fornication. Can you read Revelation 17, verse 2 through 3, please? Okay, Revelation 17 and 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Well, that verse is actually is good, I'm sorry. This same woman that's drunk, that's made the world drunk with the wine of her fornication, she's also drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yache. Can you read Revelation 17 and 6, please? Yes. 
And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahche. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The whore being drunk with the blood of the prophets and saints makes her also crucify our Lord Yahche afresh, because it is his spirit that's in the prophets. Can you read Third Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, please? But he wanted to save the house of Israel. And so he went and so he sent a portion of the spirit of Christ into the prophets, who proclaimed the true worship of Elohim for many years. There we see that in the prophets there's the spirit of Christ also. Peter, Yahweh's apostle, is an example of how killing the believers of Christ is also the crucifying of Christ again. We're going to look in Acts of Peter chapter 35. We're jumping into it where Agrippa was going to put Peter to death in Rome. And as they found out about it, we're jumping into the story here. Can you read Acts of Peter chapter 35, please? And as they consider these things, Oxtempi, Oxantipi, Zantipi, 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 Zantipi took knowledge of the counsel of her husband with Agrippa, and sent and showed Peter that he might depart from Rome. And the rest of the brethren together with Marcellus besought him to depart. But Peter said unto them, Shall we be runaways, brethren? And they said to him, Nay, but that thou mayest yet be able to serve the Lord. And he obeyed the brethren's voice and went forth alone, saying, let none of you come forth with me, but I will go forth alone, having changed the fashion of mine apparel. And as he went forth of the city, he saw the Lord entering into Rome. And when he saw him, he said, Lord, whither goest thou thus? And the Lord said unto him, I go into Rome to be crucified. And Peter said unto him, Lord, art thou being crucified again? And he said unto him, Yea, Peter, I am being crucified again. And Peter came to himself, and having beheld the Lord ascending up into heaven, he returned to Rome, rejoicing and glorifying the Lord, for that he said, I am being crucified, the which was about to befall Peter. Now you can understand that the great city is also the place where our Lord was crucified because the blood of his prophets and saints are found in her. Not literally Yache being crucified in the great city right. by Peter's example. Can you read Revelation chapter 18, verse 24, please? And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Notice, she said it was even found the blood of all that was slain upon the earth. She is being charged with the blood of all that was slain upon the earth because her works are the works that are that get that have been getting people killed from the onset onto these times. Hence, she's guilty of everyone's blood. All right. Can you read Revelation chapter eleven, verse eight, please? And their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, which our Lord was crucified. There's a, uh, where also our Lord was Excuse crucified. Me. Where also our it's Lord okay. was crucified. Sorry. It's all right. So we now we understand what that part means, where also our Lord was crucified, because the blood of the prophets and saints are in her. Now, uh, also another key that's going to identify where this great city is, you're going to find the dead bodies of the children of Israel in her street in times to come. Now, she's also spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Now, this is important because we know the great that woman is actually the great city. She's an actual land. She's a location. She's a place. Now, spiritually, the way she acts, she's going to be found acting like Sodom and Egypt. And this also helps us know this is not talking about ancient Babylon. Because ancient Babylon was Babylon. But this 
woman is going to be acting like Sodom and Egypt. <coughs> Excuse me. The iniquity of Sodom we have to look at so we can get an idea of what that great city's characteristics are going to look like. The iniquity of Sodom was as follows. Can you read it? It's Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49 and 50, please. Sure. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, pride fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. That is key to know. That great city, whomever she is, she's got pride. Chief, that's the first thing. Fullness of bread. She's not lacking anything. She has resources. An abundance of idleness was in her and her daughters. That one, I don't know. What does that mean, Zach? Idleness? Yeah. Is, lazy, is that lady, laziness? Yeah, they don't have they don't have to work hard. It's mm. they have the labor force in that great city. Have everyone else doing the work for them, right? So the poor are doing all the work. They ha they have slaves. They have the children of Israel enslaved. Right. Is Ahia said he gave his people into her hand in Isaiah forty seven. So of course there's abundance abundance of idleness in her. She's not the one doing the hard labor in the land, right? So that great city has the children of Israel enslaved and she's sitting idle, not having to do any hard work. And then neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. That great city does not help her poor. Oh. These are the characteristics of this spiritual Sodom in Egypt. What else is the characteristic of Sodom? Can we read verse 50, please? And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. So you also find haughtiness. That's that boastfulness she has, like she can't be touched. I see the queen and will see no sorrow. Right. I will lose. I will not have any loss of, I will not suffer any loss of children. This great city, they don't think they can be touched. They don't think anyone can take them down. Right. And committing abomination, you will find the abominations in this city, like um, feet, feet that are swift to shed blood. Minds that devise evil imaginations, the seven abominations that you can find in the book of Proverbs, you'll find abomination like same kind uh, intercourse, and you'll even find people laying with beasts, the different abominations that the scriptures mention. You'll find them in this great city. Well, it said every abomination. So. And she, yes, she is the mother of harlots and the, abomination, and the abominations of the earth. Right. Now, there's also, there are also some more descriptions of the type of behavior of Sodom that you can find in this city. Can you read Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 14, please? Sure. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hand of evildoers, that none doeth return from its wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. So the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah, the type of behavior you'll find amongst Sodom is committing adultery. So you'll find that in the great city. You'll find walking in lies. You can tie that into the pagan holidays that are so heavily celebrated, but they're not true to the worship of Allah Hayyam. And they also strengthen the hands of evildoers. So in that great city, you'll find the people that are evil, they are actually being encouraged right. to continue in it and prospered. Right. People look at them like they're the good people and want to give more power, more strength unto them. You'll find that in the great city. And none does that. And they do this so that none doth return from his wickedness. So... People are doing wrong, but they in their wrongdoing, they're getting ahead because Satan offers things too. They get the riches of the world and things of that nature by doing the evil. And then people are also strengthening them and giving them praise as successful people and things like that. So that person 
is not going to return from their wickedness. As you can see how things go in that great city. These are the types of things you'll find in Sodom. Let's also touch Jasher chapter 18, verse 11 to 14, to see some of the things that were going on in Sodom to get an understanding of the type of things we can find in this great city. All right. Book of Jasher chapter 18, verse 11. In those days, all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and of the whole five cities were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the higher. And they provoked the higher with their abominations. And they strengthened in acting abominably and scornfully before Ahia. And their wickedness and crimes were in those days great before Ahia. And they had in their land a very extensive valley, about half a day's walk. And in that, there were fountains of water and a great deal of herbage surrounding the water. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah went there four times in a year with their wives and children and all belonging to them. And they rejoiced there with timbrels and dances. And in the time of rejoicing, they would all arise. They would all rise and lay hold of their neighbors' wives. And some, the virgin daughters of their neighbors, and they enjoyed them. And each man saw his wife and daughter in the hands of his neighbor and did not say a word. This type of behavior is the type of things you can find in the great city. These are festivals of promiscuity, festival, festivals of fornication. If they, they go, these are the things that you'll find in that great city. All right. Can you also read Jasher 18, verse 15 to 17, please, so we can see more of the types of things that happen in the great city? Sure. That are like Sodom. Jasher chapter 18, verse 15. And they did so from morning to night, and they afterward returned home, each man to his house, and each woman to a tent. So they always did four times in a year. And when a stranger came into their cities and brought goods which he had purchased with the view to dispose of there, the people of these cities would assemble, men, women, and children, young and old, and go to the man and take his goods by force, giving a little to each man until there was an end to all the goods of the owner which he had brought into the land. And if the owner of the goods quarreled with them, saying, What is this work which you have done to me? Then they would approach him one by one, and each would show him the little which they took and taught him, saying, I only took that little which thou didst give me. And when he heard this from them all, he would arise and go from them in sorrow and bitterness of soul. When they, when they would all arise and go after him and drive him out the city with great noise and tumult. Then we see also in Sodom, there was ill business dealings. If you are not one of their people, you can also find this in the great city where if you're not one, if you're not one of them, they'll, what, the way they do business, they'll beat you out and then look at you like nobody did anything to you. So that's also characteristics you can find there. And I forgot to mention after those people had that promiscuous festival of fornication in the Sodom and Gomorrah, everybody went back to their own house like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And they did it a few times a year. This you can also find in that great city where that woman is, where they have these nights of fornication and swing, right, re reveling. Swing, swingers clubs. They, yeah, they have those, they have swingers clubs and things like that. And then everybody goes back to their normal life like nothing happened. You can find that in the great city. Yeah, even uh, different festivals and stuff. Yeah. 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 They do it with, with uh, you'll find it over there. Yeah. You know, you're going to go back that into, you're gonna have to go back into some mm -hmm. of this stuff because you. you you can't really explain it without revealing it. So <laughs> yeah, we'll here. touch back to it. We'll touch back to it. The um and remember, the whole earth is drunk with the wine of her fornication. So yes, you can find this stuff all over the world now, but she is the mother of it all. That it really goes down 
within that great city. All right. That's why a lot of people want, you're going to see when we talk about where that place is, you see why a lot of people want to come there because they want to indulge in the fornication that they see in the movies and things like that in that great city. Can you touch Jasher 19 and 8 so we can see more of what was going on in Sodom, please? And when a poor man came to their land, they would give him silver and gold and called the proclamation in the whole city not to give him a morsel of bread to eat. And if the stranger should remain there some days and die from hunger, not having been able to obtain a morsel of bread, then at his death all the people of the city would come and take their silver and gold which they had given to him. So we see, we talked about how Sodom would not strengthen the hand of the poor. In this great city, they would do things where they know what you actually need, but they're not going to give it to you so you can survive. They give you something that's insignificant, but it would not be to your health. And then when you fall, they'll take the little that they gave you. These are the characteristics of Sodom that can be found in that great city. Now, you wanna, scripture also... You want to oh, you wanna align that with what it is? They... Uh, 401k. They give you four. Oh, they they give you 401k, and if you reach a certain, when you reach that certain age, you get the, you get all of it. But a lot of times, you don't reach that certain age because you poor. Or you, you, you don't. Yeah. Or you may even get, you may even lose a job, and they take the benefits right. that they had. So it does nothing for you. You don't get no food. But that gold and silver that they were giving you, they take it right back right. Right, for their convenience. So the, the, the business dealings of Sodom, I mean, the business dealings of this great city is not well. Now, the scripture also said that great city is also called spiritual Egypt as well because she's called Sodom and Egypt. So we have to look at the characteristics of Egypt to get further guidance on what this city acts like. Uh, can you read Exodus chapter 1, verse 8 to 12, please? Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on and let us deal wisely with them. Least they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, there we see. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. There we see the mindset of the great city is they they intimidated by the children of Israel. And they fear that the children of Israel are going to multiply more. And if they get, if that great city gets into a war with anyone, they feel the Israelites are going to join against their enemies. Hence, they want to get rid of the Israelites and get them up out of, and so that they don't get overtaken by them. That's the great, the mindset of the great city acting as Egypt. All right, and the notice they don't want the Israelites to leave because they said they. Join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. So they don't want the Israelites to leave because they want to keep them enslaved. Right. But they also don't want them to multiply too much because they fear that they'll turn against them. All right. That's the mindset of the great city that has the children of Israel in her hand. Continue, please. You want to know the interesting thing that um, sure. Looking at Egypt. When they said that um, idleness is in her land, Egypt was very idle when they had the children of Israel under dominion. Right. They didn't have to do any work. Right. That does show that that's what the Israelites saw. They got them enslaved there. All right. Continue at, um, let's see how they sought to execute this plan of getting the Israelites, getting rid of them. In, out of the, I mean, minimizing them from getting to be too many people in the land. Can you read verse 11 and 12 of Exodus chapter 1, please? Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. 
and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pitom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. So there we see their plan was to put taskmasters over the Israelites and give them burdens of affliction. So that that great city used the Israelites to build its country with hard labor. You'll find the Israelites heavy in the construction business and any work pertaining to getting the economy or the place built up. Now, there, there was something key, key in there, though, that you probably didn't even realize. In Exodus 1 and 11, it said, And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pitom and Ramses. The cities that they built were the, the fanciest cities. They were the nicest looking cities, treasure cities. Mm -hmm. So when you think about Babylon, the, the, the myst mystery, Babylon the Great, you have to think of infrastructure. Who has great infrastructure? Because the children of Israel built it. Mm. That does put it into context. And you find the Israelites doing all that labor, getting that place built up. They do great work. So you have to you have to take that into consideration of of okay, what is your infrastructure? Who has the best infrastructure in the world? No. Uh, nobody had built it by, like the great city. Built, built by <laughs> slaves. Because they, they were yeah. slaves. So it you, had to be built by slaves. That's right. the key, too. It can't just be great infrastructure. It has to be built by the slaves uh, right. that are not their people. Right. The people that were given into their hand. That's key. Because a lot of the world now has developed their infrastructure. But this particular great city is built by the slaves. Right. You have the children of Judah. They're great with building and architecture, as you've seen with Bezalel built the tabernacle and Solomon orchestrating the building of the temple. And then Issachar, they're, nobody works harder than them. So they're great at that. And then you have the children of Joseph too, because Joseph designed um, that really nice palace in Egypt. So the Israelites, they're the ones there getting the place built up. These are key things. It's hopefully, Starting to get an understanding of who this mystery woman is. Let's see what else is in the spirit of Egypt to get more understanding of the way this woman operates. Can you read Jasher chapter 63, verse 6, please? Therefore, all Egypt began from that day forth to embitter the lives of the sons of Jacob and to afflict them with all manner of hard labor, because they had not known their ancestors who had delivered them in the days of the famine. So the Egyptians... There they embittered the lives of the sons of Jacob with all manner of hard labor. Where the children of Israel were taken, when they got to that great city, they were given hard labor. They were afflicted with slavery. You look into history and find where a mass of people were taken into slavery and afflicted with hard labor. And notice also, it says, I forgot to touch on in Exodus 1 and 12, it said they were also grieved because of the children of Israel, because the more we, we were multiplying and growing. So this great land, this great city where the children of Israel are, the, the, the rulers of the place do not like it when the Israelites multiply. It's grieving to them. You can find that in the great city. Egypt sought to turn. Now, is, we see the attack was to afflict them with hard labor. So this is the slavery that the Israelites were being in the great city. Egypt also sought to turn the women against the men in the, minor, in the community of the Israelites. Can we read Exodus chapter 1, verse 15, please? And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Sapphira, and the name of the other Pua. Verse 16. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. 
So there we see the Egyptians originated the Planned Parenthood agenda. And they were the ones, they, they, they went to the women of stature in the community to try to get them to do what the government wanted to be done to the people. The Egyptians also focused their attack on the men of Israel to kill them. So you can find wherever this great city is, if you see a lot of Israelite men being killed there, that's where they're operating in the spirit of Egypt. Or if you see a lot of Israelite babies being killed. Yes, or you find Planned Parenthood, abortion clinics in all the minority neighborhoods in specific areas geared against getting certain people killed, where you might the places like where Margaret Sanger, she created Planned Parenthood for the purpose of eradicating the Negro population. These are the characteristics of the spirit of Egypt that can be found in that great city. Can you read Joshua chapter 66, verse 21 and 22, please? If it please the king, let a royal decree go forth, and let it be written in the laws of Egypt, which shall not be revoked, that every male child born to the Israelites, his blood shall be spilled upon the ground. And by you doing this, when all the male children of Israel shall have died, the evil of their wars will cease. So we see the goal was get kill the Israelite men. That's how Egypt operated. And in that great city, you'll find a great focus on getting the men destroyed. Where they, they Now, they use the prison systems. They use the entertainment industry to, to show the children of Israel in a certain light. To give them the wrong mindset it towards one another. Gun violence, you'll find in the neighborhoods where the Israelite men are. Gang activity and such. And drug activity is used to kill them and incarcerate them. This you can find in the great city. Can you read Joshua 67 and 4, please? And she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name Aaron. For in the days of her conception, Pharaoh began to spill the blood of the male children of Israel. Again, the, the focus was on destroying the men. Uh, Exodus 1 and 22, please. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. So in the great city, because of the, the spirit of Egypt that's working there, you'll find that their focus is getting rid of the men. But the women, they save alive. They even prosper the women to do well in that great city. Because he had promised that Shua and Zipporah, I mean Shua, I'm sorry, Pua and um, the other sister, the midwife, Shipra, he had actually promised to give them houses and everything if, he, if they would have did what he wanted them to do. All right. Sapphira. So you'll find, Sapphira, thank you. So you'll find that great city willing to help the women out and prosper them if they'll be willing to help the government out and bring the men down. Well, in that great so city, they have um, the, um, was it Section 8? Section, yes. Section 8 is designed for the women, for the women to have housing, and the, and the man can't live in the house. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. It's for her it's and the children. Right. And and the child support system is geared toward getting the man, keeping a man out and bringing him down and to put power in the woman's hand over the man. So it's, it's a great city is tough what they're doing, but they really walk in the spirit of Egypt. And the men are destroyed as well. They destroy the men through hard labor and the things they experience through slavery, being afflicted and being brought down from their stature to where they don't treat the women right either. So the, the children of Israel, they're both afflicting each other. And then the great city, though, those that rule it are also helping forward the affliction by setting them against each other. So it's tough. It's tough in that great city. Well, that great. It's like it was tough for the Israelites in Egypt. Well, that great city sets 
set the stage of how uh, a person of that degree is supposed to treat his wife or his children through the movies and through the shows. Yes. So right. they're they're learning from influence. Right. What they see on that TV, because right. the TV shows have even changed when it pertains to the children of Israel. When you see the relationship dynamic, they're no longer, you know, two parent homes together. They usually show the Israelites divorced or having marital issues. A one, you know, a one, all these things. A one completely given over to fornication and, and can't keep a stable home mm -hmm. or. Right. You know, always out of the house or has some type of drinking problem or gambling problem yes. or right. <laughs> and it's often the men that in such a case right often the men that are on drugs or have some major issue while the woman is shown at home taking care of everything and even up the reason right. they just made another video a movie that the the man was a uh, con artist so the man comes, he's a con artist, and the woman is the good one who's getting abused. Like it, It's mm. still furthering the ignorance. All right. Destroying the people through that, that sorcery of that television. Giving people a false perception until they believe it and apply it themselves. All right. Egypt also refused to let us go. Can you read Exodus chapter 5, verse 2? Please. And Pharaoh said, Who is a higher that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I know not a higher, neither will I let Israel go. There we see in that great city, you'll find that they don't want to set the Israelites free. And the Israelites are the poor of the earth. They don't want to strengthen the hands of the Israelites to prosper either. You find that in that great city. The programs that they have, like the government programs, they're not really to help the Israelites or the poor. It's to keep them where they are. So that the, the rulers, those that are part of the upper echelon of the great city can continue in their idleness and not having to work hard, having the labor force to support them. The daughter of Babylon has followed suit and will not let the Israelites go. Can you read Isaiah 47 and 6 again, please? I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. So they did not, in not showing mercy and not want to let the Israelites go, You'll find in that great city, these slaves that they had, because they had the great city had to be the people that enslaved the Israelites. When they gave them the concept of freedom, like the Emancipation Proclamation, they introduced sharecropping to make sure they could still have the people enslaved. They just gave them another form of slavery. And they continue doing it even up to this day. The people are still held in bondage by debt. And by the way, the system works in that great city. Now, the people that are ruling this great city, the scripture said in 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 9, that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob the beginning that follow it. So it would be this great city is being ruled by the children of Edom. And scripturally, just as it said, the daughter of Babylon, she laid heavy the yoke and didn't show mercy. It's the children of Edom that fits this, this portion of understanding who's ruling this place. Can you read Amos chapter 1, verse 11, please? Thus saith Ahiah, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. This is why when you look into that great cities, their origins of how they came to be and how they came to power, you'll find that they were destroying the slaves and the indigenous people. When you read about the, the Holocaust that happened there and what was going on with the slave ships, how they would take thousands on a ship, but only hundreds would make it over the shores. 
And then you, you watch the documentaries of what was happening on the slave plantations. This was the casting off of all pity and the perpetual tearing and anger that was happening to the Israelites in the daughter of Babylon. And the scriptures also show that the daughter of Babylon, because this is speaking of the ruling powers of that great city, it's the children of Edom. Can you read Psalms 137, verse 7 and 8, please? Remember, O Ohio, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that reward of thee as thou hast served us. So we see the scriptures are showing it's Edom. That's the one. They're the ones that they were saying, raise it, raise it. They wanted every, They wanted to completely destroy through the hatred that they had held. That is what the daughter of Babylon has been doing to the children of Israel. Thankfully, there will be a remnant of Edom that will believe, and they will not be counted for the seed of Edom, but will be the children of Abraham through faith. Yes. But speaking sincerely about who's truly running what it is. They are the ones that are ruling the daughter of Babylon. Now, we have been afflicted here in the daughter of Babylon. Yet, the end, I'm sorry, we've been afflicted here and they've also required songs of us. So where this daughter of Babylon is, you'll find it's he heavily influenced with slave music. Can you read Psalms 137, verse 1 to 4, please? By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they carried us away captive, required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of them songs of Zion. How shall we sing a higher song in a strange land? Now, this is interesting. Willows are not indigenous to Iraq, where Babylon is. Willows are indigenous to Asia, and you can find them in America. We know Mystery Babylon is in Asia. Because he said, for they that carried us away captive, the Asians, Asia was not known for carrying away the children of Israel captive. It was the transatlantic slave trade, majorly, and the other slave trading that was going on, where the Israelites were carried captive and where now that they said they required of us a song. We don't read in the scriptures that the Israelites were required to sing songs in ancient Babylon. But here today, when you look into where the slave songs originate, it's in the Americas. America, to be more particular, that's where slave songs are known to come from, to help us understand that this great city is referring to none other than America. She fits the description, the pride, the idleness of bread because she has the children of Israel enslaved so that the people that are running the country, the upper echelon, they don't have to work hard. They have the labor force to do it. They, America doesn't strengthen the poor. The homeless people are actually being arrested for being homeless now. All right. Taken to camps, retirement camps. Yeah. And the soup kitchens, they, they're not really helping the people. It's very actually, a lot of people, the homeless, some, a lot of them don't even go to the homeless shelters because of how dangerous it is there. While America is spending billions of dollars on um, trying to win the election and things like that, you have not billions, but I say thousands, probably millions, however it goes. They work in raising money for that while we have poor people in the country, people that need help. They don't have the money for the stimulus, <laughs> but they have the money for, for, their, for what they need for themselves. This is this describing America, the festivals, the, the, the festivals of fornication. You have, uh, you had in Atlanta, they had a thing called Freak Nick. You have the carnivals. You have the nude, bitch nude beaches. You have the 
swingers parties and then what happens in the clubs on a regular night this that was describing america and then the next day everybody goes to work like nothing happened right. just like in sodom you have people the ill dealings of sodom in their business dealings you have people come to america thinking this is the land of opportunity but then when they get here and see all the red tape you have to go through by the time you try to get anything off the ground they've taken everything you had and then you go trying to get a loan they're not going to help because you don't have any credit This is America. The the dealings of the spirit of Egypt now. America has been trying to kill the men of Israel from the onset. You got Black Lives Matter they, to this day. Yeah, they 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 the the gun violence, they put guns in the neighborhoods and drugs to get the men to turn against each other. The killings, they they had one decree in Egypt where it was straight that if it's a male child, just spill its blood. And here today, you'll find when the cops get pulled over an Israelite man, the probability of him dying is very high. And notice, it's a focus on the men. I think, the, of course, the young women are getting killed, too. I'm not well, saying the women aren't getting killed. I know killed. there was one case that they were actually looking for one of the young lady's boyfriend and, and came in and shot her. So they were literally were right. going, they were going for a man and ended up just killing her. Right. So you see the focus is on destroying the men and the women are also getting hurt too and not saying they're not getting hurt but in understanding how she's operating like egypt they know who they're trying to get rid of margaret sanger got the award the egyptians try their goal was to kill all the israelite children particularly the males they wanted to kill the males now america they've upped it a notch they're just trying to get rid of all the children with the planned parenthood if you look into the history of Margaret Sanger, she said that the purpose of Planned Parenthood was to eradicate the Negro population. So they were it was no secret to the goal of it. That's why you'll find these Planned Parenthood clinics in the neighborhoods where the Israelites are. So scripturally, everything shows that it's America, that great city. And America since the scripture also said the woman had the cup of her fornication when she made drunk all the kings all the, um she made all the earth drunk with the wine of her fornication america has influence over the whole world everybody wants to be like america or wanted to be like america yes. or want to come partake in the delicacies of america want to come to america and get rich and enjoy the party and the lifestyle though they might not like americans or America itself, they want to come partake in the, the delicacies that are here. And America is a bunch, she, she's abundant in, he also said in Ezekiel that she had fullness of bread. America has a lot of resources here. Yet she's not helping anyone else. No, the people that receive all the benefits of it are the ones that already have. It's not about helping the poor here. So, scripturally, America is that great city. You want to um, know what I think is so amazing? When sure. when Psalms 137 talks about the, 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 the songs that the slaves were singing, how that those songs are still passed down and relevant to this day, being close to 400, 300 years, how that we still know some of these songs. But yeah. That's an amazing thing. But. We still know. We were taught in the, ver in the islands, we were taught those songs like it was a part of our history. <laughs> like now they made sure we remembered uh, uh, that we were the slaves, that we still are the slaves. They didn't tell us that, but we still are the slaves. <laughs> they they made sure we knew it. Uh -huh. like, swing low, swing chariot. Way on the water. Yeah, they continue uh -huh. to make the movies too. Usually some of the biggest um, black movies in the box offices are, have to do with slavery or something like Django. 
I missed that. Twelve years a slave. Right. They they make sure they the color purple. They, they keep they keep it going. They keep it going. So it's there's no one else that fits it so well. To have such an influence all over the world. And then also in their influence, how they influence the whole world with their with their abominations. What they put in the televisions and how they portray the Israelites is how the world views the Israelites. So we've had, Ahai has been gracious to let us leave the country and see how it is. People actually think what they see on TV is who we actually are. Right. And they're surprised to see that we're normal people too. But the wine of Babylon's fornication makes people think we're all one way, like they see in the movies wow. and in the entertainment wow. industry. All irrational, we're all uh, flamboyant and extra, or we're gangsters, or we're hoodlums, or you know, un uneducated. Uh, and if we are educated, usually it's the women, and they're usually with another nation, or right. you know, it's, it's tough. So with that, in conclusion, the woman, that's the mystery. Babylon the Great is America. Because in these latter times, she's fulfilling the prophecies of being spiritually like Sodom and Egypt. She holds the most influence over all the peoples and nations and tongues of the earth. And everyone is influenced by her lifestyle. She's prideful, in fornication, abominable and unwilling to help the poor as Sodom. And she is aimed at destroying and killing the children of Israel through the government programs and drugs and other means to get rid of the men violence. and turn the women and violence. Thank you. And she's focused on killing the men and turning the women of stature in society against their own nation in an effort to overcome the men of Israel. In the simplicity of what the scriptures show is described in America. And now you can find that type of stuff around the world because the whole world is drunk with the wine of her fornication. But America started it. So hopefully that helpful to, to know who that mystery woman is. And in time, we're going to get confirmation that she is that woman when, sadly, they kill the federal prison population there and do what they're going to do with the onslaught on the Israelites. And you find the dead bodies of the children of Israel in her streets to know that she was the great city spoken of in Revelation. Which has already started. Yes. So, so anything else, brother? I think I'm good. All right. Praise the Lord. We hope this was edifying and look forward to getting more edification out to you guys and any questions comments feel free to email us or write in the comment box look forward to hearing from you guys i'll be with you all tell them tell them